Hello Tubesters, as it says on the title, this is an unboxing of the USS Ward in 1 and 700 scale from Flyhawk. This is a is it deluxe, super deluxe, bonus edition. It's got everything in it, but it's tiny. So, uh, I'm just going to quickly read you off the back. I've just done one video where I've just gone waffling on, forget it was all written on the back, and I've told you, as I usually do, half-truths. Well, not half-truths, but you know what I mean. I, I get mixed up. <laughs> so quickly, uh, the Wix class destroyers are the first batch of the famous flush decker with four funnels. Now I'm reading this how they've translated it, so that it might be not completely flowing. Uh, but then again, it's on my my video, so when would it be? Uh, they are the outcome of massive U.S. military expansion in the First World War. There are 111 Wix class destroyers took part in two world wars, which are developed based on the Coldwell class which they've spelled class wrong, never mind. Who am I telling people who spell things wrong? Uh, USS Ward DD-139, which belongs to the Wix class, was launched on the 24th of May 1918 and was commissioned on July 24th in the same year. Uh, USS Ward didn't have any chance to perform herself in World War One, so I suppose you'd say active service. Uh, as a member of the reserve fleet, USS Ward was reserved in Santiago. Santiago? Could that be San Diego? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, on July, any Americans out there? Is there a, was there a reserve base at a place called Santiago? Or should that be San Diego? Well, on July 21st, 1921, when World War II burst out, large amounts of the ships were recommissioned, and so did USS Ward. She was recommissioned on 15th of January 1941. On July 7th, 1941, Imperial Japanese Navy invasion of July 7th, invasion of Pearl Harbor caused the Pacific War. I think I should have just rambled on myself here, really, shouldn't I? Um, oh well, take out of it what you can. Uh, she discovered and sank a Japanese midget submarine with a displacement of 47 tonnes. The action sparked the US Navy's first shot in the Pacific War. The model represents her status at this special period. After that, the USS Ward joined other fierce battles. On February 6, 1943, she was modified as a high-speed transport ship to support amphibious assault missions, but it must have been the destiny that she didn't survive from the Japanese kamikaze attack in the Philippine Sea on the 7th of November 1944, three years after Pearl Harbor invasion. Now I will just add to the, uh, the, the I think she shot down a couple of the kamikaze. Uh, the one that hit her caused such serious damage that the Americans herself sank the ward, uh, not the kamikaze uh, flyer. Uh, also, thank goodness, only one member of crew was injured uh, and everybody else was taken off. So, she, And if you want to see her in her state on the ocean floor now, she was recently rediscovered a couple of years ago. Uh, it's a couple of years ago. It was this year or last year. Anyway, put it in YouTube. You'll see the, the ward line on the ocean floor. Uh, she's fairly well crusted with, with marine growth because she, uh, she's not as deep as she, some of the other wrecks that you see almost in pristine condition but she isn't a war grave so so that's good although the way that the the people around all these areas are scrapping wrecks illegally they're diving on war graves and literally just scrapping and getting them for scrap it's disgraceful and then when like our government it just feebly goes oh you know we're looking into it you know they don't give a damn about our war graves the people that scrap in a man our government let's not go down that road so this is a deluxe edition it's got everything in it uh, i've unboxed it twice i believe now once to have a look myself second time i did a huge video uh, which the computer decided it wasn't going to have anything to do with it wasn't inflicting it on you tubesters it did you a favor so we're going to third, fourth time, whatever it is. So uh, let's get down to the bench, take a look. You will need your magnifying glasses out for this one. Or, or you know, if you like your shots, look through a couple of shot glasses. It'll do the same thing. But you're going to need them. Right, Tubesters, here's the ward in her 
Pearl Harbor days when they're saying she sunk uh, the submarine, which she did. Uh, after, by the way, after the war, there were a lot of claims that she, they reckoned he hadn't sunk the submarine because they'd never found any evidence of it. Well, lo and behold, they found that wreck only uh, a couple of years ago, I believe, and you can see her on the ocean floor. So, again, put to USS Ward in, and I'm sure all those videos will come up on YouTube if you're interested. Uh, I do like my ships, I must admit. I've said, out of all the things I do, yes, I love my Starfighter and all that um, as, a, as an aircraft and, you know, to build, but it's the 1 in 700 ships are my, my uh, favourite, I have to say. Right, to give you an idea, and I've just realised I haven't actually scrubbed my fingernails, which is what I try and do before a video, so you'll just have to put up with it. I was out with a pop this afternoon, or this morning. Uh, I'll try and put these two halves together quickly. Chat amongst yourselves. Right, just to get, I've just put these two halves together to give you an idea of the size. She's not a big ship, she's an old First World War destroyer and they weren't big. Uh, it says on that uh, she didn't see active service. Well, she was still patrolling the Caribbean and all that. Uh, that. To me, that's active service. You don't have to have a roller, a depth charge off the, the deck or put a torpedo in. Don't forget, a lot of these were used to carry torpedoes and attack. They would be screening the battle fleets and attacking them with torpedoes. The, the depth charge thing came later type of thing, if that makes sense. Really, uh, World War Two it changed particularly, but um, in these days uh, they were mainly still for carrying torpedoes. But if you look at that fit, that's beautiful. I mean, yeah, it's got a. That's for the full deck. I won't be doing that. I'll be doing. I doubt I'll be doing it anyway. You know, my my brain it changes. But uh, I'll be putting the flat bit on the bottom, which is no point showing you because it's only a flat bit. That's the technical word for it. Uh, sorry about the crispy bags. Unfortunately, I've done this a couple of times and I'm not getting everything out the first time. Right, uh, here's our flush deck. See what I mean? All, all the same there, there's no step downs or anything. That's a flush decker. I'll say four, should I have four smokestacks? I'm trying to look through. Let's just look at the boats first. Look at the little boats in all their glory. I mean that's fantastic. You've even got like a a yawl mast there by the look of it. To, would be a mast, I believe. That pole. I mean, Flywalk are really well known for even in their. I mean, look at these guns here. Now I've got these in brass, but only the bat. I think they only give you the barrel. I think you have to cut the piece out and, and attach it to the breech area. <laughs> what fun! <laughs> but even at that scale. Compared to uh, the trumpeters I've been working on, that, that really is lovely, delightful that is. We've got some scuttles. Uh, very few, that's like one sprue, that's the largest sprue uh, that you'll get. Because you don't need a lot, you know, there's not a lot there. We've got some little tiny propellers there, with the shafts themselves. Uh, we've got a Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier in at the moment with uh, knackered propeller shafts from what I'm, I gather. Here is our life rafts, although I do believe you get those in uh, in photo etch. Now I, I'm not a slave to photo etch. I think I don't believe you can work on one of these ships without it. In my opinion, I prefer seeing photo etch because I think it does add a lot of detail when it's done right. But yeah, fair enough, it's me building and I don't do them right. Uh, as the Lexington will show you with all the glue marks and bendy photo edge. But I'll get there. It's all practice. Uh, we've got our super structures, as I call them, for want of a better word. Bridge structures. Again, lovely, lovely details. Uh, again, you can try and replace all the, all the plastic bits from metal bits. A little. Uh, <laughs> not sure what you call <laughs> superstructure again. What have we got? Oh, we got our funnels here. Again, we've got four. In this I say at this time in a in a life, I wouldn't be surprised. Like most enterprising model companies, if Flyhawk 
don't come along and uh, change her into a fast transport at some stage and give you the Higgins boats and which I probably would do right oh here we go now the again they're pretty good at doing this uh, talking like I own a fly hook kit apart from this one but uh, I've seen enough of them get a nice little box within the box for your photo etch sheets now let me just work out how in been that long I can't remember how to get into the damn box. Uh, just remember this is a tiny destroyer so that everything about her in the extras is tiny. Uh, I'm, oh, it's just, I'm not going to get them out of the bags, we'll just see them through the bags for now. But These are very pliable PE, that's very flexible that Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad having that flexible photo etch. It um, it can be problematic if you're if you bending railings. Sometimes you want not springing them, but if they're too flexible, they'll sometimes snap on you. All right, on me. So you can see here we've got a load of different stuff. That's a technical word. And we've got our oars. For the uh, for the we call them Carly floats, I believe in the UK. I don't know if they did in the States, but you get a very nice little uh, name pack and compare name pack, something like that. Name a tag, whatever you want to call it. But obviously it folds. And although I'm going to do mine in the water, I'm sure you could make something of that because it's too nice not to. There's some other little bits there. I don't know if those two. Are part of the ship or part of this but uh, unlike trumpeter again where they'll stick on trumpeter and one in 700 scale and then give you the name of the ship obviously your ship will sit on top of there and it just comes like that. Uh, that that's a lot better to me that's perfect so well done flyhawk uh, we no, they're covered up. I did have a look at them. Very, but you're not going to see them through there, really, are you? Uh, very basic. It gives you a pennant number. Um, I think a plimsoll line, stuff like that. Now we come to the resin. Now remember, you're not looking at the square bit. The square bit is your f is just the the fill for the resin. They've even put flyhawk on there. You're looking at this little fella, which is, by the look of it the forehead gun shield the state of my nails yeah. that's rushing a video out that is I would imagine is your front gun shield the other the rear guns the two or three at the rear come and ram any they didn't they they, they didn't have them they they just uh, had open guns save the top weight because they're high up on the ship I presume it's to save the top weight so Peter tubes you I had a look at the the plastic ones are absolutely fine these are really dainty. I would probably use these uh, because I've got them. Why not use them? You know, if you're going to get the the sort of singing or dancing number, then you might as well use it, aren't you? Now these little things, I have no idea what these are because I haven't looked in the instructions properly. But again, you're looking at the little bit off the end. Now you'd think if <laughs> if you open that bag up. One's bust off already. You might just think that's just a bit of resin that's <laughs> that's broken off the main pouring lug. No idea what they are at the moment. <laughs> we'll find out at some stage. Now, these are our brass gun barrels. Um, let me just... Oh dear, I had got this worked out. I'd actually got a pin here just to be all fancy. You know when people do all... Oh, right. This is what I use for um, helping doing a bit of carving and stuff. Uh, but it's a pin in a piece of wooden dowel. They are tiny and you're going to have to drill out the very end of your, your barrel to put those in. So you may decide is it worth it or not. Again, I'm going to probably have a go because I don't see the point in having all this and not use it. So that's that. Now, <laughs> I think these are the ship's bollards. 
for putting ropes around and that. There we go. <laughs> I don't even know if I'd put them up the right way or not. I mean, that is ridiculous. <laughs> but we'll have a go, eh? We might as well. There's hundreds of them. Look at them. It's like one of them flea circuses. Hey, let's get them to do dancing. You know, <laughs> they're doing the rumba. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh dear. Uh, and the last one, depth charges. And you guessed it, they're tiny and they're in brass and they've been turned. I know this because I put some micro microphones on, no, uh, magnifying glasses on to see if they were just, they weren't just bits of cut wire. Can, oh, can we? I don't think we're going to see any more than that. But they are actually turned. They are, believe me. And they're your depth charges. Seems a shame to paint them, doesn't it? <laughs> Now, I've got a Mara in Colorado that goes by the name of Colorado Jeff. No, he doesn't actually. He goes by the name of Je Jeff's, Jeff Donahue's models, scale models. But he's better known to a lot of us as Colorado Jeff. And he has a mini lathe. Jeff, you could make a fortune. Look at these. And look at them little bollards. You could make a fortune, son. You know what I mean? You could be the premier brass turner of depth charges in 1 in 700 scale. Think about it. <laughs> right, uh, what else have we got? Um, I, this isn't going to show. I've only got the small. But to give you an idea, I don't, I'm just going to show you this bit here uh, underneath in a second because uh, it just gives you an idea of, of there's our main armament. One, two, and three. But these are the type of instructions if you've seen Fly Orc. And that's how you replace the gun barrels. Oh, that ain't going to be fun, is it? <laughs> oh dear. Anchor by the look of it. Remove door. Stick on new one. Oh dear. Now what I'm planning to do is, once I've finished uh, um, Lexington, I have got the Bismarck to do with a massive full full issue, again, wooden deck and everything in 1 in 700 scale. But I'm going to make the ward next, I think, uh, just to get some practice in. Because what I've absolutely loved working on the Lexington, and I've still got a fair bit to go on with the photo etch still, uh, but I'm making a right dog's breakfast of it, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not very good, as we all know, and it's not brilliant. But it's my first real attempt. I, I've done bits on HMS Kent in my, my draw, one in 350 scale uh, frigate. Um, but there wasn't that much photo etch compared to, to this one. And obviously the scale was bigger. So, you know, it, I... I, I I'm going to do that one. I had planned just to do a load of destroyers. I was looking for a German destroyer um, or a Royal Navy destroyer. Uh, when I saw this one come up, I just thought I've got to, I've got to have that. It's got everything on board, literally. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. And I thought, let's give it a go. So thank you very much for stopping by. As I say, if any of that has uh, has got you thinking creatively and having a go yourself. They are still out there on, on eBay and they're still under £20. Uh, obviously, if you're in the States, uh, it might even be worth getting a eBay, a eBay, a UK eBay one with the, the dollar against the pound. But think about it. Obviously, you're, you've got to put yourself in a static free environment. <laughs> you've got to, you've got to um, only breathe at certain times, you've got to regulate your heartbeat. Uh, you've got to have some uh, there are there's got to be tweezers out there that aren't fly away ones which I've got to look for because I lose that much flow to which flying off uh, but you've got to take all that into consideration but I think it would really be worth f for the money and the hours <laughs> you're going to take to do it I think that's a cracking little kit and uh, fly orc should be really commended for for that type of effort uh, oh, just oh, sound like I come from Barry in South Wales there. Eh? 
Gavin and Stacey, watch it on the YouTube. Uh, there's a bollard, so that's what, fingernail Gav. There's a bollard, that's what you're looking at. Now although it doesn't show it on the depth charge, I swear when I looked at my magnifiers, uh, there was some grooves around the top and the bottom. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. Go on, give it a go. Get into ship, shipbuilding and getting get into shipbuilding with the USS Ward. Under 20 quid and you get the full issue. Right, thanks a lot guys. This has probably been as long as the last one and it probably won't load up again. Them's the breaks. Right, take care of yourselves and we'll catch each other soon on another video.